Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zeta with you. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Make sure that you like and you subscribe to my channel because we got new things coming out all the time. This is an exciting time we live in. You're going to enjoy all the videos because God is moving by His Spirit. I'm going to be teaching you how to walk in the Spirit. I'm going to talk to you about angels. We're going to have lots of conferences that are going to come to you. So make sure that you always are ready for what God's going to do for you. I want to sow into your life because I believe that this is the turning point. Here's why. Jesse Duplantis just told me. He prayed for this whole meeting. And he said, he said, did you know that you were sent back from the dead for the full gospel businessmen and women? Now listen, this is why I'm telling you this, because I asked him, I said, why am I doing this and not you, Jesse? I want to know why I'm doing this, because you deserve to do this. You started with the full gospel businessmen a long time ago. And he would tell me this story about, and he was in his Toyota, Jesse was, and he, he was going, I think it was in Mississippi, was it Mississippi, with a, that double wide, Louisiana, and then double wide church. And he's telling us a story, and he's sitting there, and I'm thinking, wait, I've heard this story before. And Tim had told me this story. So he said, I pulled up to this little church. Jesse Duplantis is not known at all. He gets out of his car, and this man, Tim, comes out to help him with his equipment. Is anybody here? And he, Jesse told him, one day, you're going to see Jesse Duplantis on TV everywhere, and I'm going to have my own plane. He had a Toyota, and he was believing God to fill it everywhere he went in his churches. Can you, and here he is. This is Tim right here. Tim was the man at that double wide that helped Jesse in with his books. You know what happened when the first time that I spoke at the Full Gospel Businessmen? It was at Denny's, right? Denny's? You know who came out to my car? The beautiful black Mustang, the Yoders. Let me use you know who came out to help me with my stuff? Tim King. And I'm like, oh, man. So I told Jesse that. He goes, it's all rigged. The whole thing is rigged. All right, my wife also has volume one of my Heavenly Realms. Same thing. I just imparted in there. This is volume one. There's 22 of those. And um, she's just going to give those out to whoever acts crazy enough. Okay. This... This is, this is the portion for today. Your portion for today is that you don't have to go through what I went through. You don't have to die. You don't have to come back to this crazy place. You can live right now. You can choose to die to yourself and live today, and you don't have to go through what I went through. You don't have to feel what I felt, that I had not operated fully. Now, one of the things, when I, when I met my wife, I told her, I said, just so you know, one day I'm going to write a book on this. Do you know I waited 23 years to write that book? The Lord told me not to talk about it. For 23 years, I was not allowed to talk about it. But I told her, I said, I'm going to write a book one day. And I said, I want that Jesse Duplantis that's on TV to interview me on TBN whenever I write that book. So it doesn't surprise you, but when I met Jesse, the Lord spoke to him and told, me, told him to take me to TBN. And this is the book. You can give it away. Yeah. So when, when I asked Jesse what happened, he said, well, when I met you on that tour that you took of my ministry, the Lord spoke to me. I go, that was two years ago. He never told me. So what do you think is in store for you that you just don't know about? I went on TBN, and the power of God went through those airwaves, and people were calling in and getting saved, and all I did was share my testimony. Sid Roth was watching that show. And he said, what have we been doing? That's, what we, that's who we need on that show. Call him right now. Is anybody here? So he calls me, and we talked for two and a half hours. Never met him. 
But I knew I was going to be in because Jesus told me I was, be, I was sent back for him. Did you hear me? I was sent back for Sidra. So we're on the phone for two and a half hours, and he said, I can't hang up. He said, he said we're going to count the three and just hang up. <laughs> I'm serious. The power of God was so strong. He had spilled water all over him. From the, from the, the, he was drinking. Now listen to me. I got a call right after he hung up. It was from his producer. And he said, what did you just do to him? He can't talk. He can't walk. And he has never, and he named all the big boys, he has never spent more than eight minutes on the phone with anybody. Did you hear what I said? And here, an insignificant flight attendant, all of a sudden, thank you, that'd be good. I'm good. An insignificant flight attendant and a hairdresser became valuable. Why? Because heaven had placed a value on us before we were born. Did you know that Jesus has placed gifts inside of you before you were born? And then he has placed a demand on those gifts on all the people around you. You are valuable. Your market value has just gone up. You see, there's a demand placed on your gift because that's the way God works. We all work together. We all need each other. I was sent back from your future to tell you it's bright, but if you really want to give the devil a headache, own it. Own your condition now and do something about it. Start using your mouth, talking where you're going. Jesus invented that, not the faith teachers. Jesus said that if you'll believe in your heart and speak with your mouth, those things will come to pass. You can say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and it shall be done for you. When you pray, you should believe that you have received it already. Jesus said that. It's in red. He told me he started this. So email him. <laughs> no, I, have, I, have a, I have a couple... I have a couple of things I got to tell you, and then I want to prophesy. Susan, I want you to come up here because I, I have a word for you. Um, the Lord gave me a word. Don't, don't worry about it. The, word, the Lord gives me words for people weeks ahead of time. So I already knew I was giving her a word a, a long time ago. I pray for this woman every day. I just met her in July. She's going to be helping lead the worship starting tonight, I believe. It's a mighty woman of God. And... You can just stay right there. And if somebody could stand beside her, I need an usher, somebody to stand beside her to keep her up. <laughs> this is a hands free ministry. What has happened is, is that sometimes people touch God's heart, and it doesn't matter what you think anymore. It doesn't matter what you say anymore because God has stood up. Did you know that when Stephen got stoned, Jesus stood up. That's huge. So that's what Jesus is doing with her right now. What has happened is, is the Lord says that because you have submitted to my yoke and you have learned of me and your character has been formed and you've been tried in the fire and tested and you've come out as pure gold. And because of that, I am taking you on to the other things that I've spoken to you about, the greater works, where fire comes out of your mouth when you speak, where you speak the end from the beginning, where you walk where angels are always prevalent. That is where I'm taking you. The fear of the Lord shall be with you. I've anointed you. And the yoke-breaking anointing shall manifest from this point on. I thank you, Lord, for the anointing. Heal her body. Heal her finances. Everything come in order in the name of Jesus. And, the, and there's the angel, the angel of the Lord right there. You will never be the same again, Susan, ever again. For I have taken up your case, and now it is out of your hands. And just so you know, your enemies have just turned and ran. I pronounce you well in Jesus' name. You and your household, completely 
healed, set apart for my purpose. Amen. Now listen to me. If you were in my shoes and you couldn't fail, you'd start swinging. Samson did this. Samson was surrounded one time with a thousand Philistines, more than that, actually. And you know what happened? He looked down, and he did just what I said to do. You just do everything to stay alive. You go to the doctor, and you take your healing scriptures with you. You know, you don't start taking your healing scriptures when you get sick. You take them all the time. You build your faith up. You don't wait until you got a war to draw your lines in battle. Did you hear what I just said? No, no general would draw his lines when he gets to battle. He has a strategy. God has a strategy to break the devil's power over every part of your life, including your body. So you take your healing scriptures with you, and you go to the hospital. You go to the emergency room, and you do everything to stay alive because it's not over yet. This is not a lack of faith. I'm telling you, I was sent back, and I know what I'm talking about. You are promoted if you die. That's it. Did you know that I was there with Jesus for 45 minutes, didn't know how I had died? Never was explained to me. I didn't care. And neither did anybody else. All they cared about is that I had been faithful and I was there. Everybody was happy to meet me. Every prophet in the Old Testament is waiting to meet you because you were chosen to finish this up. What they built on, what they built on, you're getting to put the finishing touches on it. You have been chosen, and the prophets of God want to meet you. See, you're having a hard time with this. I can say it again. So why am I here? I'm here because the full gospel businessmen and women have been resurrected and are walking around Jerusalem right now, and nobody can explain it. There's a resurrection happening in this body. In the full gospel businessmen, there's a resurrection happening. What's happening is, is you're taking your place and your leaders, your leaders in the kingdom of God. And, and part of that is bringing in the wealth now, there is nobody in this room that would open a business so you could lose money unless you want a tax write-off. Is there anybody here? Has anybody ever invested in, in something so that they can lose? Have you ever gone to battle at your own expense? Oh, God finances the soldier. It's in the Bible, believe me. So it's time to step into what God has for us. Now, this is how you start. Right now, you, you take responsibility for where you're at. And you say, from now on, Lord, there's a new sheriff in town. I've been deputized by the power in the name of Jesus. And I own every place that I walk. I own every place that I touch. Everything that I lay my hands on prospers. How many of you? Have ever had an angel appear to you? Okay, out of the people that have had an angel appear to you, how many have had an angel say, you know what, the Lord has sent me to lay a sickness on you so I can teach you, so uh, I'm going to lay my hands on you. Anybody had that happen? No, they won't come in my house. I say, get away from me, Jack. Don't touch me. Now, that's not the angel of the Lord. Why? Why do you know that? Because Jesus went around doing good and healing everyone that was oppressed of the devil according to Acts 10.38, right? So by the word of God, we know that that is not an angel of the Lord. Okay, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. The angel of the Lord has never had a bad thought of you, has never thought he was going to fail, has never thought you were going to fail. Ever. Did you know that? That, that an angel has never been sent thinking he was going to fail. Do you know the Holy Spirit that's inside of you has never had a thought of failure, ever. The Holy Spirit inside of you has never thought you were going to fail. And he's not a bird. He doesn't have a beak. I met him. He's a person just like Jesus. And he wants to take you into his realm. 
Now that realm is going to give you deliverance to where the devils will not mess with you anymore because they cannot convince you of anything that's in their doctrine. Yeah. What, why, why, did, why did it take a six-month-old Christian who'd given up F-16s to take out a devil in a, in a major city, in a major denomination? Why did it take that? Why did it take David, who's just bringing Happy Meals to his brother, brothers in the battlefield? Why, did, why was he chosen? I'll tell you why. Because he was anointed by Samuel as king. And that day, David realized when he showed up at the battle line to take that giant out, he saw that this was his entrance into his promotion. Today is your promotion. And I'm not just saying that. I know what I'm talking about. Everybody in this room has walked in with me. It is an amazing thing because all over the world, it takes me days to get people to where you're at right now. Praise be to God. The angels have been sent to cause you to be triumphant in every situation. If you're not, you need to own it. Don't blame them. Don't blame God, okay? This is a fallen world. Our bodies deteriorate. People ask me, what should I do? I go, do everything to stay alive and build your faith up. What about your finances? I said, do everything you can to get out of debt. Isn't it interesting when the Lord, I was asked to stay with a ministry to be one of their singers. And the Lord said, you're going to Southwest Airlines. I go, that little airline, that's going to go out of business. That's what I told the Lord. It's just a little airline. They had 89 airplanes, 19 cities. And they wore shorts to work. I like to wear ties, you know. He said, that's where you're going. That's, where, that's your mission. That's not my provision. That's my mission. See, God's my provision. I'm a Levite. That means that I'm taken care of by the Lord. My mission was Southwest Airlines for 29 years. So I went to that airline. Now, if you look at 1988 when I was hired in July, if you, if you look on the Dow and the, uh, the NASDAQ and LUV Love, if you look at those stocks and you look at the, those indices and you put them all up, if I had time, I would have done it for you. From 1988 till the present time when I, when I retired, my stock that they gave me split 13 times. And I'm not even an investor. So when I retired, these people were like, how did you do this? Well, you want to know what happened. I'm going to close with this. I don't want to close, but we still have time, though, don't we? A little bit. Okay, now listen, listen. I thought that I had, I had made God mad when he told me to go to Southwest Airlines. So what I did was, I said, no, I'm called the ministry. I'm called to stand behind one of these things right here and preach. And the Lord said, no, you're called, you're called, your mission is the marketplace. Your mission is Southwest Airlines. That's your field. And everybody on that airplane is your congregation. So I felt guilty. So you know what I did at night? I took my per diem money that they gave me to, to eat with. And, you know, because I wanted to get right with God, I thought, well, you know, he sent me to this airline. It's going to fail. I'm serious. And they were giving me this stock. You know, every, every, they would give me this stock for profit sharing every year, you know. And I'm like, this is going to be worth nothing. And then when I retired, it was worth over $500,000, just my stock alone, just that stock. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, I said a half a million dollars. Wasn't even trying, but this is what I'm trying to tell you. What I did do is I took my per diem money and I fasted. And I went out and I fed the homeless at night. Whatever city I was in, all over the United States, I would witness to them and tell them, I don't want to see them back here next year. We need you back into society because Jesus loves you. He wrote a book about you. And he, he, he's wanting you to accept him and get back into society and work. So here's a hamburger. And that's when Whoppers were a dollar. Those days are over. 
No, the juniors aren't even dollar, you know. Well, thank you for joining me for this video. I believe that it really ministered to you. Make sure that you check out my website, kevinzada.com, and the Warrior Notes School of Ministry as well as on the tab there. You can sign up for that. I've got plenty of courses available to you. I just want to pray for you because the, the Holy Spirit is just telling me that there is a revelation. There's a spirit of revelation that He wants to give you. Like Paul talked about in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 through 23, he said, and I'm just going to pray this over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that everyone that's watching has the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you. And I pray, Lord God, right now that the eyes of their heart be enlightened. Thank you for joining me. May the resurrection power of Jesus Christ be with you.